Okay, very briefly. Could you discuss with the editor of Hansard, find out exactly what hap happened, who made the change, why it was made, and direct the editor to have the, in to have the entry corrected so that we know exactly that what the Prime Minister said yesterday? I order. I, I will, of course, uh, discuss this matter with the editor. But, of course, I, I've said before to the House that uh, Fansard does uh, sort out gobbledygook. Uh, because if we, if they, if uh, honourable members' speeches were always reported verbatim, I think they wouldn't be widely understood. <laughs> yes. In order for me to raise a serious and disgraceful affront to a leading member of this House, which I believe requires some action on your part. Yeah. Mr Speaker, last night the Honourable Member for Kingston-upon-Hull East, the Opposition Transport Spokesman, went to the annual dinner of the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders only to find, only to find that a place had not been laid for him. Oh. Understandably aggrieved, Mr Speaker, understandably aggrieved, the Honourable Member tore a strip off the staff in front of royalty and stormed out. One can understand the sensitivities of someone who has served on both sides of the well, I have to say to the honourable member, the, the best will in the world, I really, I cannot be held responsible. Order, well, it, honestly, I mean, I, it's a good try, but it's nothing, absolutely, what goes on at dinner parties, thank goodness, is nothing to do with me. Speaker, on Wednesday last, the Honourable Member for Amber Valley rose on a bogus point of order and made certain allegations about the conduct of my, about the conduct of my Honourable Friend, the Member for East Hull, who had been present at a function, who had been present at a function at which the Honourable Member who made the allegation was not present the previous evening. The allegation that was made was completely untrue, but was widely reported. Subsequently, Mr Speaker, the Honourable Member for Amber Valley went into the Member's Tea Room of this House and was told by a number of my Honourable Friends, in no uncertain terms, just how unacceptable that sort of conduct was. It wouldn't be very difficult, would it? The, the, fo the following day, Mr Speaker, certain newspapers carried reports of the second incident, the one in the Tea Room, quoting extensively from the, honourable, from the Honourable Member opposite and from one of his Honourable Friends, who also, as I understand it, was not present for that or the previous incident. You will remember, Mr Speaker, when it was possible for Honourable Members of this House to disagree with each other away from this chamber, occasionally using industrial language, without, without the more sneaky Honourable Members opposite running off to the press. Good. What is it? Mr Speaker, perhaps through the usual channels, draw the attention of the more senior and perhaps responsible members of the Conservative Party to this sort of conduct and warn them that if it continues, it will provoke widespread retaliation from this side. Now, no, I'm dealing with one thing at a time. And may I, may I say in, in relation, this did happen last uh, week. I have drawn the matter to the attention of the usual channels. Time was, not very long ago, where, when uh, conversations in dining rooms or outside this chamber and in tea rooms uh, were not brought into this chamber. I, I hope we can get back to those days. It's not order. It is not necessary, it seems to me, to uh, use that kind of ammunition in arguing our policies. But, sir, Sir Hal Miller. Go further to that point of order, and for the avoidance of doubt, as the person who was ultimately responsible for the SMMT dinner, may I make it plain that when it became known to me after dinner that the honourable gentleman had left, so little disturbance did his departure cause, that I made inquiries into what had taken place and found out that the seating plan in the reception room, because of late changes, did not correspond, did not correspond with the printed menu, which had been printed obviously some time earlier. I therefore caused the President to send an apology to the Honourable Member the following morning, 
And when I read the erroneous reports in the press, I made a statement to the press as to the correct position, which is that the Honourable Member had left the dinner making the least fuss possible, even though, in fact, there had been a place available for him. Well, I, I take a no oh, well, I think that disposes of that matter. A norm well, I wouldn't normally uh, go back to something that happened last Wednesday.